Amen, 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 amen. God bless you. God bless you. Wonderful, blessed women of God um, that's uh, joining us again. Um, this is week three, glory to God. And, and I pray that this adventure has been going well for you and that <laughs> God is doing in your life what only God can do. Um, I know for myself that uh, I've been uh, just really getting blessed by our daily prayer calls and devotion times that, that God is just moving in, in all of our lives and doing what only God can do during this time. And it's been, it's been a blessed time. And, and I thank you for taking the journey with me because it's, it's been, it's been a blessing to my soul as well. Amen. So we're just going to go ahead and begin um, today. I'm going to open in prayer. Amen. So father, in the name of Jesus, we just, we just invite you spirit of the living God. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for being in our midst today, God, and speaking and doing and manifesting as only you can, just as you have been doing, Father God, in these weeks past, oh God. And we just we just give you glory one more time, oh God, for the things that you're doing in the lives of your people, oh God, because truly it's not by might, not by power, but by your spirit, oh God, that you're doing these things, oh God, that you are the King of glory and you are the Almighty One and you are the great I am that I am and you are the one that's healing, restoring, delivering, and setting free. Oh God, I thank you that the spirit of truth has come. And when the spirit of truth comes, he leads us into all truth. And I thank you, Father God, that they are knowing the truth. And by the truth, they are being set free, Father. In Jesus' name, amen, 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 amen. God bless you. All right, I'm going to start off with, and, and I realize that God has been processing a lot of you. And, um, and you know, so you may have already dealt with some of this to some level, but I want you to have an understanding because I recognize that some of you, that even though you're going through the process of getting delivered and getting healed and getting free from some of these areas, you, you know, I want you to have a level of understanding as well so that you can begin to have that understanding for others and to help others to help others in their processes because that's what I was sharing with Stephanie as people were coming in I said you know the thing that's exci is exciting for me to watch is yes some of you are getting some great deliverance healing and restoration that you need but also there is a birthing and a launching into your destiny into your purpose amen as the old things pass away the new things begin to unlock your purpose your destiny what God's called you to do who you you are in him it's going to begin to unfold and come on and you're going to begin to walk a new path come on you're going to begin to experience life that that you've not been experiencing the the call of god the fullness of god is going to begin to unfold in your life so this is exciting to watch god do these things in your life and in your hearts and so I want you to have this level of understanding because of that, because this is a launching into your next, amen? I want you to understand some of these things of how you got here and what it means so that you can begin to even help others up and out as God brings them across your path. Um, so we're going to start off with uh, Psalms 10, 14, but you God see the trouble of the afflicted. You consider their grief and take it in hand. The victims commit themselves to you and you are the helper of the fatherless. Now I'm starting to talk about victim mentality in week one, because this is what's happened to a lot of people is they've been traumatized. They've been abused by every kind of form of abuse. They've been trade. They've been, been betrayed. They've been rejected. Um, they've been just victimized in the death depths of their soul has been fragmented and broken by all the abuses of the enemy mm -hmm. and the way that the enemy has come against them and wounded them. And so it left one feeling in this condition as a victim. And it began to train their thought processes in their minds so that they begin to think in alignment with the victimization. They begin to feel like a victim. They begin to feel like one that was hopeless and helpless. They begin to, you know, actually have an outlook of a victim that they did not, you know, um, see um, themselves as Christ saw them. Come on. They could not identify with their victory or that they were an overcomer because all they could see and identify with was their former traumas and victimizations and abuse and pain. So a victim is someone who's been harmed, injured, cheated, hurt as a result of a crime, accident, or other event or action. It also means a person that's been tricked or duped. It also means a living creature 
command that uh, has been given up as a religious sacrifice. Did you hear that? It means a living creature that has been given up as a religious sacrifice. So someone that has been victimized in their soul wow. come on, has been targeted by the enemy and been offered as a sacrifice. Come on, come on. So here you're, you're dealing with bail. You're dealing with a bail offering. Victimizations are like a bail offering. Come on, this is because it, it, it requires a sacrifice. It requires blood. Come on, it requires something to empower it and enthrone it. Come on, and every time that we bow to the victimization, think about all the years that you just tolerated and accepted and, and, and did not resist like you're doing right now. Come on, you, you unknowingly come into that place of agreement. You unknowingly come to that place of bowing before it and empower the victimization over your life because when it creates a what an altar so to speak it's like when you go to the altar of god and you begin to submit yourself to god and you begin to bow before god you empower him over your life amen you empower him as deity you empower him over your life so when you bow to these things and you don't oppose them like you're doing now then what you are empowering that over your life so it continued this cycle by your own agreement and continue this cycle because you bowed and didn't resist come on and because you've been targeted as a sacrifice by a demonic force come on and you were paying the price you were paying the price you were becoming that sacrifice over and over and over again when you did not resist that enemy come on so that's why it's important to resist Come on, because you're not bowing to it and you're not empowering the cycle. You're not empowering that demonic force to have his way over your life, to continue to hinder and harass you. Come on, this is why the truth is important because he's the father of all lies, amen? And everywhere that there's been a lie, this has been an area that he's maneuvered against you. This is why I've said over and over, it's important that you recognize where you're believing the lie is truth. That's why when some of you have said several things to me in passing, you didn't even realize what you were, were disclosing was a core belief, something that you believe Leave wrongly in the depths of your soul for so long that you did it was just who you are that's how you believe that's how you thought but it was a lie and so you had so much belief in it because that's truly how you identified yourself that's truly how you thought but it was total opposite of the truth so that's that's deep in your core it's deep in your foundation and a couple of you i said oh, you need to repent of that you need to uproot that because that's a wrong that's a core belief that's wrong and you need to deposit the truth that's in there so that truth will begin to flourish in your life amen and then that's what's going to come out of your mouth because see that thing's so deep in you that's why you were able to speak it and didn't even realize what you were speaking because what comes out of your mouth it comes what the abundance of your heart the overflow of your heart so that thing is deep deep in your heart and you didn't even realize it until it come out your mouth come on and the light was shined on it and you know no 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 that's wrong that's a lie that's not how you need to believe that's not how you need to speak because it's contrary to the word then you need to put the right belief you need to put the truth in there that's going to contradict that thing and it needs to go deep into your core so that's what comes out of your mouth because it's flowing out of your heart amen mm -hmm. so um so this is someone a victim is also someone who suffers a, a destructive or injurious actions or been cheated a person who also has been deceived by his or own his or her own emotions or by ignorance or dishonesty of others Amen. So basically, when, when we have been victimized, we've been taken advantage of by the enemy and by others. Amen. And because we, we don't have that knowledge until it's full blown, until we're actually feeling the fallout, until we're actually feeling the pain, that's that level of ignorance. Uh, we're ignorance of the dishonesty of others. We're ignorance of their wrong motivations. We're ignorant 
of the assignment they may be parting with the enemy against us amen we don't see it until we feel the pain we don't see it until we feel the devastation and so this is what the other thing that i see as we come out of that victimization come on and we're going to become more um, alive and awakened to the spirit we're going to have a higher level of discernment we're going to begin to see come on with 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 eyes of the spirit we're going to begin to discern the enemy we're going to begin to discern these familiar traps because god's breaking ungodly cycles in this process so we're not going to fall for those old former things come on we're not going to fall for the things that used to ensnare us we're not going to fall for the things and the ways that the enemy used to victimize us because why we're no longer a victim that's no longer our identity so we're not going to fall for these things any longer we've learned how to resist we've learned what to to grab a hold of the truth and to believe the truth because he is the father of all lies and we're not going to grab onto the lies and believe them as truth any longer because the spirit of truth has come and he's leading us into all truth and he's renewing our minds to think not like a victim anymore but he's going to give us a victorious mindset he's going to give us a kingdom mentality because his thoughts god's thoughts and god's ways are higher than ours and so we are connecting into the higher thoughts and the higher ways of god that's going to keep us what from going into and entertaining these cycles that we've been in these destructive cycles that kept us as a victim in days past amen, amen. in hebrew victim means a sacrifice and offering pray p-r-e-y pray and a gift okay so us in the past being a victim who who is that a sacrifice for who is that an offering to who is that a gift to come on see when when it's a true sacrifice to god we lay ourselves down willingly as an offering come on holy and acceptable and pleasing unto god but when we are forced and victimized in this sense it's an offering to the wrong god it's an offering to the to the adversary Come on, that's come to steal, kill, and destroy. So see, I want you to understand that because I want you to have more ammunition to not allow yourself to be put in that position of feeling like a victim ever again. Because see, then it's becoming, you're becoming, your pain is becoming an offering to the enemy. Come on. Come on. So you've got to get rid of that. You've got to not hold on to that any longer. Come on. You, you, you got to get rid of that. You cannot walk in that pain any longer because this, this kind of level of pain, this is not the pain of, of God stretching you. This is not the level of pain of God preparing you, but this is the level of pain. That's an offering. It's a victimization pain. It's a tormenting pain. It's a, I'm coming to steal, kill and destroy you pain. But at the same time that you're enduring this, this is a sacrifice, an offering, a gift. You have become a P-R-E-Y to the enemy. Come on. So I want you to, to have more fire in your belly to come out of agreement with every place that you have been as a victim in the past. Because you are not to be a sacrifice, an offering, a gift. You are not to be a P-R-E-Y to the enemy ever again. Amen. Amen. Romans 8, 15, the spirit you receive does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again. Rather, the spirit you receive brought about your adoption to sonship. And by him, we cry out, Abba, Father. Amen. So let me give you some signs of a victim mentality that I'm sure the spirit of God has been dealing with because this is a part of coming out of this false identity and coming into your true identity in Christ. And so we have to deal with these things that, that would keep us attached to that victim mentality and keep us feeling, you know, like a victim and keep us in that place of bondage. Um, one of the things that a victim mentality would cause us to um, begin to reflect and experience is self-pity. Amen. And a lot of times when you're wounded, a lot of times when you're hurt, a lot of times when you've been going through a lot of tragedy um, and devastations, you, you begin to waller in that pain. You begin to self-pity. And when you're in self-pity, you are in a deep agreement with that thing. And it's really hard for someone to pull you out until you begin to loosen the grip yourself. Amen. But once you come out of self-pity, you begin to loosen the grip on that thing and you begin to, you know, shift. Okay. Um, I'm not holding on to this so tightly. This is, you know, I'm coming out of agreement with it. See, this is the thing about deliverance in your soul. When you begin to come out of agreement with the lie, it's easy. 
Amen. God, God's able to, whew, you, you're going to see an acceleration in your restoration because you've let go of the lie. Amen. And, and you really, and truly, if the body of Christ would understand, we wouldn't need so much hands-on deliverance and altars, because when you are altered by the truth inside of yourself, then the spirit of God, he, he's in there working. The spirit of truth is in there working and he's driving out the ice. He's driving out these things because you surrender to the truth and what you're knowing the truth. And because knowing means what to become one with the truth. When you're one with the truth, there's no lie. And when there's no lie, there's there's no liar. So that means if you're one with the truth, that means you're one with God and you're in unity with God, then there's no lies and there's no liars. That means there can't be any spirits oppressing you. Come on, there cannot be no spirits depressing you because why the lie, the lie that gave it permission is gone and you are in unity and oneness with God, the father and the truth. Come on, we need the truth because we are breaking the lies with the truth. We are as well shutting down the avenues that the enemy had to invade our souls amen so the victim mentality will cause one to walk at a level of self-pity come on the victim mentality also opens people up for rejection and to feel rejected amen the victim mentality again the victim mentality is like that foundation that was laid in the depths of your soul when you were a child usually that's when it comes in when something comes in to traumatize you when somebody um, abuses you when you have great deep losses when when you're sexually molested when your mama and father turn on you or or you experience some kind of traumatic experience as a child it comes in and it lays that victim mentality as an ungodly foundation in your soul and then it begins to feed you and it begins to dictate to you and it begins to be an open door and a place that the enemy comes in and out a place that the enemy begins to build on all the days of your life layering and layering and layering and layering all these different abuses all these different traumas all these different rejections all these different things that come at you because the enemy wants to keep you as that victim and so he wants you to have this stuff layered on layered on all throughout your life because he never wants you to get to that foundation at the depths of your soul from the point of a child when it was laid or whenever it was laid because when you get to that original foundation then it's broken come on it's dismantled and he doesn't have that thing to build upon anymore he cannot build and make you feel like a victim over and over again because then you're coming to the place of building on the sure foundation the solid rock of Christ Jesus come on and what you build on that is when built with truth come on and you're partnering with heaven in this building process in the depths of your soul come on and you're not going to be that victim because why because you're coming into your true identity the new you identity the new man identity in christ amen so as as you just see this 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 ungodly foundation broken up of the victim mentality you're going to see self-pity begin to go you're going to see those feelings of rejection begin to go you're going you're gonna to see that sense of abandonment. Come on. It's, it's going to begin to go. These are levels of healing that you're going to begin to experience. You know, because someone that you loved deeply may have abandoned you, may have let you down, may have left you by the wayside. And, and they said they loved you, but they did you this way and left you alone and feeling abandoned and feeling forsaken. Come on. And so that sense of abandonment that's caused you not to be able to trust people. Come on. That sense of abandonment that 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 just give you a bad feeling about intimate relationships and, and coming into a place of trusting people. Come on. It, it, it's going to begin to peel off of you. It's going to begin to be healed. These levels are going to begin to be healed. Every area of abuse, because the victim mentality is associated with abuse. All these areas of abuse are going to begin to get healed. And you're going to begin to set, be set free from everything that, that these cycles brought into your life that opposed the true nature and identity of Christ Jesus. Come on, all childhood trauma. God will begin to deal with childhood trauma and he will begin to heal the layers and the depths of your soul that's been impacted by childhood trauma because this is the foundation of victim mentality and it, it works with childhood trauma in every area of victimization as a victim mentality that foundation of course would cause victimizations over and over and over again um every form of abuse and also god will begin to heal trauma effects you know the areas of violation the areas of hurt the areas of woundedness come on because trauma wounds 
Come on, trauma hurts. Trauma causes devastation in the depths of your soul. So all these things are, are what come forth out of a victim mentality. And so when you begin to go in this process of allowing God to deal with that ungodly foundation in the depths of your soul and begin to renew your mind with the truth so you no longer are in agreement with these things and no longer think as a victim, then you're going to see levels of healing. Come on, you're going to see levels of deliverance. You're going to see levels of restoration because you're coming into a place of awareness. You're coming to a place of, of not being in agreement with this stuff, but you're resisting. You're drawing nigh to God and you're resisting the enemy and he shall flee. And I'm going to say something else, ladies. This is something that's a between you and God journey. So you're learning how to, to walk this thing without a codependency on man. You're learning how to come to God and experience the great I am that I am. This is not about man. This is not about somebody laying hands on you, but this is a process of knowing your God and knowing the truth and allowing the truth to set you free, set you free indeed. Come on. I've never been so free in all my life. After all the hundreds of hands that's been laid on me and deliverance sessions that I've experienced from, from even big name people, I'm talking about the freedom that's come with knowing the truth. Come on. Yes, it can. It can can cause a perversion. Yes, it can, Patricia. You're absolutely correct. So that's what I'm saying. This is a walk. This is a walk. A lot of people, when they just get the get the deliverance and get the healing in the altars, and, and they don't know what to do after that. They don't know what to do to keep it. They don't hold on to it. Come on. Yes, trauma fragments your soul. Exactly. And this is what I'm talking about, the levels of healing that come. Come on, because of the fragmentation and all these things that are hidden in, in the layers of your soul that are, that are hidden underneath these broken layers, on, underneath all this fragmentation. Because if you think about a, a vase that you throw on the ground, you throw a vase on the ground, it, it splinters and fragments into thousands of pieces, right? And so you're trying to, you're trying to put it all back together in your own human efforts. And guess what? You're not going to be able to get all the little slivers. You're not going to be getting to be able to get all the pieces, but that's what fragmentation is. That's what the enemy does when he violates and victimizes your soul. Come on. He causes all these breakings and all this this devastation in the depths of your soul. And that's why God has to go and God has to get all the pieces. Man can't do this for you. It's a submission to God in his process. Come on. So he begins to get all these pieces back together and the ones that don't belong, he knows, he knows he's not going to put back together, put you back together with, with abandonment. He's not going to put you back together with self-pity. Come on. He's going to put you back together with what is the truth, with what is in agreement and accordance with his new identity for you, the new man identity in Christ Jesus. That's what you're going to be put back together with. So this is a process. This is a process. And also um, victimization will also cause um, you know, of course, because of the levels of trauma, it can cause infirmity in your body. And we will talk about that later, but also it will cause negative mindsets that assist in your victimization because of your way of thinking. Come on. You begin to think in, in, in a way that's in accordance with victimization, begin to think in a way of uh, one that's rejected. So you begin to you begin to expect rejection. You begin to expect somebody to abandon you. You begin to expect somebody to abuse you. You begin to expect somebody to victimize you. It, it, it begins to, you know, just begins to twist your, your thinking. That's a level of perversion, Patricia, as well, is because your thinking begins to be perverted. You no longer think along lines of the truth. You no longer think rightly about certain things that are familiar. You're used to these feelings of self-pity. You're used to these feelings of rejection. You're used to these feelings of abandonment. You're used to these feelings associated with abuse. So that, that's your expectation. You begin to think along those lines of ex expecting it to happen. And so you're kind of like, you're, you're self-sabotaging yourself almost. Come on. Yes, because you look through a broken lens. Amen. You attract these things to you. Amen. That's a part of the victimization. But again, remember what a victim truly is. It's a sacrifice. It's an offering. Come on, it's a gift and you become a P-R-E-Y to the enemy. 
so you can no longer allow yourself to be the enemy sacrifice you got to lay yourself down as a willing sacrifice to god amen no longer allow yourself to think uh, along these lines you know begin to check yourself begin to check your thinking the battlefield is the mind i'm telling you when you begin to to really conquer your mind you're going to see new levels of healing in the depths of your soul because you're no longer in agreement with these things come on you're no longer tolerating these things but you are resisting these things you are cultivating the identity of christ jesus you are cultivating your new creation identity when you come out of these things and you begin to walk in these ways and begin to align with the truth okay and so there's a new emerging of the new man identity when you come out of agreement with these things let me see what I want to talk about. All right. The other thing I wanted to talk about is this is the process. You know, a couple of years ago, I wrote so many books on, uh, along these lines. And now I can see the cultivation. I can see where God's been taking me. And because as I look back, there's pieces of the puzzle in all these books. And one thing, one story that the Lord really um, took me to when I wrote the book, Transformational Glory. Um, he began to show me, you know, about the glory of God that gets deposited in us, you know, when we uh, first receive Christ and that, that glory is deep within us. And that's for our transformation. That's truly to awaken our identity in Christ and begin to transform us from the inside out because we can't do this work on our own. I mean, I mean, I don't care how knowledgeable you are. I don't care how knowledgeable you are, you know, you, you're going to have a lot of head knowledge, but you need that partnership with the spirit of God. You need that partnership with the glory of God because he truly is the transformer. Amen. So when we get saved, there's that transformational glory that's deposited in your depths, the spirit of God in the depths of your soul. And, and as you partner with that transformation, he begins to awaken your, your new man identity in Christ. That's, that's been deposited. Yes. That has been deposited in, in, in your depths, in your DNA, so that that glory of transformation that's in your, your depths is beginning to speak to your true DNA that's deposited in your depths. And so it begins to awaken it. And when it begins to awaken it, it begins to overpower the old man identity. It begins to arise. Amen. But it takes what? It takes our agreement. It takes our coming into unity with the process and with the truth. Come on. Because when you're in agreement with the truth, you're in agreement with the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost because he is the spirit of truth. And as long as you're living the lie, as long as you're believing the lie, as long as you're not resisting what the enemy's doing, you're at a level of agreement. And then what? You are often a hearer, but not a doer. Come on. That's what the Pharisees and the Sadducees were. They were the religious scribes. They were the religious ones that, that spoke it and talked it, but they, they never, they never allowed that power within them to transform them and to change them. They, they didn't walk in the power. They talked the power. They didn't walk in the power. Hear me. Your transformation is walking, walking in the power, not just talking. Yes. You have to confess it. Yes. Yes, you have to possess it. Yes, you have to declare and decree it. But then when the rubber meets the road, are you walking what you're saying? Come on, come on. You have to walk it. You have to walk it. This is a walk this time. This is why no man can really get you there because it's something you have to walk out. It's individual. It's between you and your God because your God put that power in your soul. He put that DNA inside of you that he wants to awaken, that he wants to quicken. And as you partner with the spirit of God, you're saying yes to the transformational glory that's already in your depths. And that transformational glory, it begins to work on you, but it just needs you to come into the place of agreement. Come on. So as the spirit of the Lord began to really deal with me about this, when he told me that a lot of my cycles was a religious spirit because I had entertained these cycles and I religiously got delivered and delivered and re-delivered, but I, you know, didn't hold on to it. And then I would go right back to the old cycle religiously, religiously, the same, the same struggles, the same bondages, the same captivity over and over and over. Amen. So it was a religious cycle. It was a religious spirit. 
And so the Lord began to show me, he says, Ruth, that power is inside of you to change all of this. You're just partnering with the wrong force. You're partnering with the lie and not the truth. You, you've got to come out of this cycle and it's going to cause you what? To walk in truth, to partner with truth, because then you are saying yes to that transforming power, my glory that's inside of you. Come on. So when you partner with the glory and you partner with the truth, this is why you're experiencing breakthroughs. This is why you're experiencing what you're experiencing as you walk in the truth, as you're walking this thing out. And he took me to the story about Gomer and Hosea. And, you know, Hosea was, was um, uh, the prophet. Gomer was the wife of the prophet. And, and God told him, he says, go, go marry her. Go marry her. Now, Gomer means complete. Hosea means salvation and deliverance. So now you have a prophet whose name interprets salvation and deliverance, which is symbolic for our bridegroom. Come on, our king. Come on, God, Jesus. And then you have Gomer, whose name means complete. She was an adulterous woman. She was an unfaithful woman. She slept around. She went to the house of the harlots. Come on, in fact, Gomer had to go drag her out. I mean, Jose had to go drag her out. And even after he married her, she was unfaithful. Come on. And, and see, the Lord began to show me. He said, you know, he said, when, when you know, come on, know me intimately and know me in this way, but then you have all these other lovers. Come on. You're unfaithful to my truth. You're unfaithful to me in these levels because you're partnering with them. Well, come on. Come on. We need the fear of the Lord again. Come on. We need to understand we have to be accountable for the condition of our souls. Come on. We can't have these false lovers. Come on. We, we can't have these things that we bow to and willingly allow the enemy to make us a prey. Come on, make us a sacrifice that empowers the enemy over our lives and empowers demonic forces. We can't give them what they want any longer. We have to deny them access. Come on. So Gomer means complete. So when she came together in unity with her bridegroom, come on, there was deliverance. Oh, come on. Come on. This is the prophetic picture for us. When we Come on, feeling incomplete. When we feel broken and victimized, when we become one in unity with our bridegroom, come on, our salvation, our deliverance, when we become one with him, the spirit of truth, because we're denying the lies. When we become one, unified in him, not him just abiding in us, but we choose to abide in him because we're abiding in the truth. We're abiding in his presence. We become one with him in unity in him, our deliverance, our salvation. We're becoming one with, we're going to find that completeness in the depths of our soul. Come on. I told Jose to marry Gomer. God knew she was going to be unfaithful. Come on. And during this time, God was distressed with Israel and their unfaithfulness. Come on. They were, in, they were incomplete, incomplete. They were adulterous. Come on. But God, God had a plan. Come on. He knew. He knew their unfaithfulness. But he also knew what he wanted to accomplish. He also knew what he wanted to speak to us as a prophetic journey. And I want to read to you Hosea, chapter 2. On that day, says the Lord, you will call me my husband, and no longer will you call me my Baal. See, see, there's this, there's this battle between two gods. Come on, that's happening in our soul. Who are we going to submit to? Who are we going to sacrifice to? Amen? For I will remove the names of the Baals from your mouth. And they shall be mentioned by name no more. I will make for you a covenant on that day 
with the wild animals, wild animals, the birds of the air and the creeping things of the ground. And I will abolish the bow, the sword and the war from the land. And I will make you lay down in safety. I will make you lay down in safety and I will take you for my wife forever. Oh my goodness. He will take us for his wife forever. He will make us to lay down in safety. Come on, come on. I will take you for my wife in righteousness and in justice, in steadfast love and in mercy. I will take you for my wife in faithfulness and you shall know the Lord. On that day, I will answer, says the Lord. I will answer the heavens and they shall answer the earth and the earth shall answer the grain, the wine and the oil and they shall answer Jezreel and I will sow him for myself in the land and I will have pity on Lo Ruama and I will say Lo Ami, you are my people and he shall say you are my God in lo ruhama means not pitied any longer. Come on, come on. So he will have pity on those that have felt like they were being pitied. They will be pitied no longer. Oh, come on. See, this is all in Hosea. Come on, the the the, the chapter in the the, the book of the Bible that is set aside for a prophetic picture of an adulterous woman, an adulterous bride, that, that her name prophetically means complete, even though she was seemingly so incomplete, even though she was so broken, even though she had all these adulterous relationships, even though she was found in the house of the harlots, even though her bridegroom had to go drag her back because she was being wayward once again, Come on, that's just like us. The bridegroom sometimes has had to drag us back because we've been wayward, because we've been unfaithful, because we've had, come on, we've been spiritually adulterous at times. We've not always been true to God. May it be because of our brokenness. May it be because of our pain. May it be because of our ignorance. Come on, we've not always resisted the enemy, but God is breaking that off of us and he's drawn us to the place. And even if it's taking place in our wilderness time, God, is going to do this work. Hosea 6. Come, let us return to the Lord, for it is he who was torn, and he will heal us. He has struck down, and he will bind us up. After two days, he will revive us. On the third day, he will raise us up, that we may live before him. Let us know, let us press on to knowing the Lord. His appearing is as sure as the dawn. He will come to us like the showers, like the spring rains that water the earth. What shall I do with you, O Ephraim? What shall I do with you, O Judah? Your love is like a morning cloud, like the dew that goes away early. Therefore, I have honed them by the prophets. I have killed them by the words of my mouth, and my judgment goes forth as a light. But I desire steadfast love and not sacrifice. And the knowledge of God rather than burnt offerings. Hear him. He desires steadfast love and not sacrifice. The knowledge of God rather than offerings. See, so even in our wilderness times, God, God is doing these deep works in our lives. Come on, he's bringing us up and he's bringing us out. And it's going to happen because we're being unified with him in the depths of our soul in a place we've never been before because we've had a level of agreement with the lies. Come on, because we've been influenced by the tragedies and the victimizations. Come on, but we're coming up and we're coming out of agreement with those things and we're resisting. And like I said, that's why we're experiencing levels of healing, levels of freedom, levels of restoration in our soul, like some probably have not experienced ever before because they're coming out of agreement with the original lies, the foundational bondage, the foundational um, things that were laid even as, as childhood within the depths of their soul. I want to read to you one more thing before we close and have some prayer. Um, years ago, I was in a gathering, a meeting, um, and I saw just all these wonderful things taking place in this atmosphere. I and mean, the spirit of the Lord was flowing. The worship was flowing. And all around the room, I noticed that people were getting ministered to by the spirit of God. It was such an outpouring. 
And suddenly I begin to see in the spirit. I begin to see that as we in, in that room, we, we all had our eyes fixed on God. We were all there not to be seen, not to entertain, not to get anything, but we were all there just to focus on the Lord. And we were all worshiping the Lord. And it was a true spirit and truth worship. And as that worship went up from the congregation, I saw it go up and I saw it anoint the father's head. True story. I saw it anoint his head. And then I saw it begin to flow. And I instantly began to remember Psalms 133. Because it talks about the oil flowing down the head. And I began to see it flow down, flow down. And then I began to see it flow back down into the congregation. And then I began to see this oil wherever it hit. I began to see people getting delivered. I began to people get to see people healed. I began to see manifestations of God moving on people's lives all over the room. And the Lord began to show me. He says, where there's unity, there's a commanded blessing. He says, some people just look at that as finances and houses and cars. He says, no, 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 no. He says, the unity of my spirit. Come on. When they're in unity with my spirit, it produces the commanded blessing. It produces the manifestation. It produces the healing. It produces the deliverance. It produces the restoration. It produces whatever my kingdom and whatever I have authorized for them to receive when they are in unity with me. It releases an oil that goes up and it anoints my head and it flows down as a double portion. Come on. And it comes back down and it produces in their life what could not be produced before that place of unity. So I want to read to you the elaboration that the Spirit of the Lord gave me in depth. And I put it in, in one of my books, The Gatekeeper. I, I think I put that on there for some of y'all to access. The Gatekeeper is in chapter number nine, chapter 19. Okay, I'm long-winded sometimes, not just when I speak, but when I write books too as well. I, I feel like I got to give everything I got at the moment. So I end up having these really thick books sometimes. So anyway, um, the call of unity in our gates. So Psalms 133, behold how good and how pleasant it is for the brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious ointment poured on the head and ran down on the beard, even the beard of Aaron, the first high priest that came down upon the collar of the skirts of his garments, consecrating the whole body. It is like the dew of the lofty Mount Hermon and the dew that comes on the hills of Zion. For there the Lord has commanded the blessing, even life forevermore upon the high and the lowly. So as I, then I began to talk about my experience and here we go. First it poured upon the head and then it runs down the beard. Beard is prophetic for strength and honor. So the oil of unity goes up and upon the father's head and runs down his beard, the father's strength and honor. Then it rolls down to the beard of Aaron, which is symbolic for Jesus. Then to the collar. The collar is an opening, also prophetic for mouth. So now this double portion oil is running down upon the openings in the earth, the mouthpieces of God, you, the mouthpieces of God that release heaven and the earth. From there, it goes to the skirts of his garments, his mantles, which consecrates, activates, and empowers the body. Then it flows to the dew of Mount Hermon. Dew falls in the morning. It leaves a residue of heaven in the atmosphere. So the dew falling meant it was a new day. New things would emerge. This new day would bring forth a shift, a new direction, new manifestations. And Hermon, as in Mount Hermon, has its roots in the word consecrated. Here we can see that being in unity with God in our depths, aligning with God is oneness and it consecrates us. Then suddenly a shift of a new day as well falls upon Zion, God's church, his rulership, his kingship. In the place of being in one in unity with heaven, so heaven can invade the earth, God has commanded his blessing, life forevermore. In John 10, 10, we see the enemy has purpose for his coming to produce death and to destroy. But the purpose of Jesus covers all of the purposes of the enemy. Jesus brings life, life more abundantly, which is what we shall experience as we learn to be the gatekeeper and rule in Christ Jesus over the internal kingdom. So, so we shall come to that place of being in unity with heaven and experiencing life more abundantly. Amen. And one more thing that I want to say before we go to prayer is truth in Hebrew. That's what I, truth in Hebrew means covenant as well as faithfulness. Truth in Hebrew means covenant as well as faithfulness. So see, as we are coming to the place of truth, come on, and coming into unity with truth, we shall experience not just our new creation identity, 
but we shall begin to experience his covenant blessings more and more because we are in alignment and agreement with our covenant in him. Amen. Amen. So, Father, I just thank you for these blessed people. And so I just want to um, open it up. And does anybody have any comments, any prayer requests, anything to add? This is your time. Come on. Um, I'm Rebecca. I can only agree with that, what you said. And I experienced it really because uh, I'm here since one day uh, in my parents' house. And <laughs> the, the attacks were really strange and the lies and, the, and your... Yeah, and and uh, I, I know yeah this 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 foul, this foul artist in in my life and in the family and then must go deep of my soul. Yeah, and in the head. Yeah. Amen. So you've been experiencing um have you been experiencing mind battles? Um yeah, my father had has mm, his my parents are broken. They're both victim is, uh, victims, and um, my father, um, yeah, is hypochondric and other things going on in his mind. They are not true. He cursing all the time. The whole family say things. They put us down, and it is is really strange when when um, I, I, I get always uh, the confrontation with the demons. It it is it is really strange. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but but see, as you come to that place of completeness and wholeness, mm. you know, you got to recognize there's an ascension in the, in the truth. Amen. Yeah. That you're you're no longer going to be grounded in these levels. You're going to come up, come up, come up, come up. And yeah. so this is the place that you're going to have more power and authority over these yeah. things, and you're going to begin to speak. You know, before you know, is sometimes when we when we're in this warfare, where it's from a lot of familiar things that are surrounding us, it's kind of, we're just beating ourselves up. I mean, we're just, yeah, we're just yeah. taxing ourselves. We're wearing ourselves out, wrestling with things, but see, there's an ascension in truth. You're coming up higher and higher and higher because you're coming into your true identity and that positioning of being seated in heavenly places. And I truly firmly believe that when you come to this place, there's going to be such a release because all these things are under your feet and you're going to yeah. begin to speak and you're going to begin to see instantaneously the shift the change the alignments you're going to begin to see even them in your household get delivered and they don't even understand what's taking place but it's because that positioning that you're in come on you're releasing the heaven you're releasing heaven you're releasing the kingdom come on and and every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess and and i declare and decree over your own atmosphere that's why i was asking you if you were sensing mind battles because i sense atmosphere yeah. i sense there's some things in the atmosphere and in your environment and, and it's trying to bring confusion and disillusion yeah. and, and yeah. you're fighting oppression there's oppressive spirits there's yeah. oppressive spirits in your atmosphere and, and that's why i was asking you that because i could see it i could see it mm. and, and in the name of jesus we declare and decree that that atmosphere clears now in jesus name god god every spirit that father god has been lingering there in her atmosphere Atmosphere. We take authority over it. We command it to go in Jesus' name. I thank you, oh God, that she's arising in her depths. She's arising in the spirit, oh God. She is aligning, God, and she is coming to the place, oh God, of her new creation identity. God, she's going to begin to walk in it. She's going to begin to experience your authority and your dominion, and every knee shall bow. Oh God, we even pray for her parents, oh God. We pray, oh God, that you will do this work in them, oh God, that they shall know the truth, and by the truth, they shall be set free, oh God. God, that you touch their mind, oh God, that you bring healing to their depths, oh God. Oh God, every broken place, every broken thing inside of them, God, we agree right now that you put your hands upon them, oh God, and that you bring a divine alignment, that you bring healing, that you bring restoration, that you bring deliverance to them, oh God. And even as you do this, oh God, it's going to be blessing to Rebecca's life, oh God, because God is in her atmosphere and is contending against her, oh God. So God, we thank you that you put an end to this struggle, oh God, and that you begin to fill the atmosphere, oh God. You be high and lifted up, oh God, and let your train fill the temple. Fill the atmosphere, Spirit of the living God. Bring your divine order into the atmosphere of our home, Father. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name.
Amen. 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 I was going to say, anybody on here, if you think about Rebecca, you see her struggle, begin to lift that up for her. Amen. 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 Anybody else have any comments, prayer requests, testimonies, anything? This is Laverne. I just wanted to say, can you hear me? Yes. I wanted to say that this is a, a great, great confirmation. Uh, me and Linda have been uh, before we, out, you know, we started, that was the one thing God told me uh, that I needed to return to my first love. And um, uh, and I've been just kind of quietly seeking how, but then you just gave me something deeper of the levels of unfaithfulness and then even the struggles that I've been having uh, feel, uh, seeming to be delivered, but then being something always warring with me. Yeah. And so this this is just it's it's just a great confirmation and a blessing to get some direction and some substance on the depth of what the war is so that you can shed it down, you know. And and so I, I just I wanted to just let you know that uh I bless God for that and and we we're on our way. We're on our way. We are, <laughs> yes, we are. See, because our bridegroom. <laughs> Even if we're in the wilderness, he, he's got a plan. Amen? Amen. He's got a plan to bring us out. And we are coming one with our bridegroom. And that's completeness. Amen. Amen. That's completeness. Because he is our deliverer. And when we become one with our bridegroom, think about that, ladies. Come on. <laughs> that's, why, that's why we need the truth, but we need his love. Yes, Lord. We, we need the truth to cauterize the lie and to uproot the lie, but we need mm -hmm. the, the power of his love to become one with our bridegroom. Come on. That's yes, and when we are in him in that dimension, that's when we're complete. That's when we're whole. Come on. In his presence, we are made whole. Come on. Come on. That's why intimacy is so important in this process. Thank we you, gotta Lord. have truth and we gotta have the love of God. Come on, this is what we need hand in hand to become that new creation person that God intends us to be for that new man to arise, his identity in us to arise and no longer walking in that identity of who we once were or what we once experienced, the victimizations of the enemy. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, yes, ladies, so. when, I, when I read that about victim, that it means to be a sacrifice, come on an offering and a prey to the enemy. I'm like, no, oh, dirty devil. Uh, I'm not, I'm not going to agree ever again in Jesus name with anything that victimizes me. You, I'm not going to be a sacrifice to the devil. Come on. I'm not going to empower him in any way by me being a willing victim. Come on. Come on. This is what, that's why I was like, man, it, we got to grab a hold of this. Because we're to be that living sacrifice, willing sacrifice to God and not made to be a sacrifice in terms of being a victim to the enemy. Come on. So this is a time that we, we begin to stand up for ourselves. Come on. You know, sometimes we are in the midst of people that you know, it's hard to find people to stand up for us. Come on. Because they're all going through their own thing. Come on. But so if you're in that position where you don't feel a lot of people in your proximity that are standing up for you, you feel like the Lone Ranger, you feel like you're out there on your own, you got to understand who's inside of you. Come on, the overcomer that overcame every adversity, every victimization, every enemy, every way the enemy would come to abuse you and misuse you. He's inside of you and he overcome it all. He made the way for you. He knows the way of escape. He knows how to get you up and out. You've got to lean onto him. You've got to depend on him. You've got to allow the identity, um, uh, that part of your identity to be unlocked, the overcomer. Remember, I know it was garbly yesterday because my line was messed up but it, but in revelations 2 it talks about the blessings that come upon the overcomer because they chose to overcome come on there's there's heavens that begin to open as you choose to overcome there's alignments that begin to take place because you choose to overcome 
God begins to move in your life and do things because you choose to overcome. That means you're coming into agreement with him. You're coming into unity with him. You're allowing the identity of the overcomer to emerge and you're overcoming your struggles. You're overcoming your victimizations. You're overcoming the pain. You're overcoming the rejections. You're overcoming the abuse. You're overcoming everything that used to stop you. And because you're choosing to overcome God's blessings are being released. The heavens are opening. Alignments are taking place. Things that you sought and was crying out for God to do. And it seemed like you were running into a brick wall. Suddenly the wall gets dismantled. Suddenly the ways begin to get made. Suddenly he's a way maker. He makes a way where there seemeth not to be a way. Suddenly you're beginning to walk out of the wilderness. and You're beginning to walk into the green pastures. Suddenly you were wandering around in Egypt. But now suddenly there's a Red Sea experience experience before you and suddenly you're going into the promised land why because you chose to be the overcomer and not the victim come on you chose to be the overcomer and not the victim come on choice ladies choice choose you this day make a choice all day long, there's going to be opportunities as you're on this recovery process. But the enemy is going to try to make you feel like a victim again. He's going to try to set you up. He's going to try to bring things, thoughts. Come on. But you've got to choose not to be that victim. You got to choose to be the overcomer. And as you're choosing to be the overcomer, as I said, you're allowing that piece of your new man identity to emerge. The overcomer within you is emerging come on not by mind not by power but by his spirit come on it's the spirit of god within you the overcomer within you the dna of christ jesus in you begins to emerge as you align as you choose to overcome come on and just like just like i'm remembering you know john the baptist when jesus who who was truth there was no sin in him Come on, he didn't, he didn't need to be baptized, but it was for, for the fulfillment. It was for us to have an example. Come on, it was for us to see our journey. He went to John the Baptist and he was baptized. Come on, he was baptized in water, and it, which is what? Representative of being baptized unto death. And also it was representative of the washing of the water of the word. Come on, it was our minds, come on, had to be washed by the water of the word because once those former thoughts and imaginations, come on, are washed away and we begin to think with the mind of Christ, it truly, truly brings a death to the old man. Come on, because that is what resurrects the old man is our thoughts. What we're entertaining in our mind can resurrect something that God has reckoned as dead. When we think on these things, we can resurrect these things. Come on, that even God himself is reckoned as dead. We can resurrect something. We can resurrect former pain. Some people have a hard time getting deep, deep wounds healed because they're constantly allowing the enemy to replay things in their mind. And it's constantly resurrecting former pain. Even pain that God has been trying to heal suddenly gets all dug up and gets festering again. Come on, like it's a recent wound. Because they're allowing the enemy to replay it in their mind over and over again. Come on. So we got to guard our mind. Because when we guard our mind, we're guarding our hearts. Come on. And we're, we're bringing this alignment in our depths. Come on, with the Father, Son, the Holy Ghost. And we're choosing to overcome. We're choosing not to be that victim. Amen. So this is a, a choice. It's a choice. Amen. Amen. Anybody else have anything? I just want to. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, sweetie. Um, yeah, I just cannot agree more that uh, what you shared today actually was the, my journey with the Lord. Um, a uh, speak to my identity first, as always. And he, I just remembered one of the conference, he just speak to me like, so it, it, it was something happened. It was like, uh, I tried to talk to a friend, but she didn't want to talk to me. And suddenly, I don't know what's the reason, but I think that time 
was God's working. And he just says, today, Sophia, I release and let me love to you. Mm. And he taught me, you know, in the Bible, there's like, if your enemy slept on your, this left or the right first that you give the other side to do like this like and that Lord, Lord, the God said this is the love Amen. and he showed me through that sister I have nothing wrong with her but I know that's God's working for me like you know for me and uh, he just say today I, I release a limited love to you he ministered to me I couldn't stop crying for half now a really long time so from that time I've delivered I, I, I just like speak to my identity since then it's pretty long time and then later he delivered me away like from the spirit of rejection powerful but the way he delivered me not really healing way it was really like speak the truth in love amen because I have his love and then he talked to me I would like to sh uh, send to you this testimony because it's so powerful. Um, the time I did, the I went through my self-deliverance. I deal with a lot of this kind of like whatever the demons, bad dreams, but I know mm -hmm. that I, I need to really press in. But this kind of rejection from like relationships, typically like, uh, um, uh, like uh, married parts, I'm still single, but I'm happy I'm still single now because God has the best man for me. But I did went through a lot of rejection through relationships. Every time when the man approached me and then it was like, for me, mm -mm. but when I almost like, okay, and then they stopped. Mm -hmm. So I was wondering what happened. And then thank God for that. Um, he gave me not only man, he just like, Pour his love to me and he delivered me from this rejection just in the morning when I got up. I did it many, like, just like I had, like, you know, like, Lord, thank you for the day. And started the words came out to me was like, uh, I can't remember exactly which, which words, but I know that it is. He said, the beauty, the, the beauty of rejected um, stone or block has became, has became the cornerstone of the house. Right. And who did, yeah, and who did this? It's God. God did this purposely and to make this stone as a cornerstone. And he spoke to me, Sophia, who's that cornerstone? It's like it's Jesus. And then he spoke to me, truth with the love. Who are you compared to Jesus Christ? Who are you? If Jesus Christ be rejected, your God be rejected, who said you are not be rejected? And I was like, there's way to spend like, experience, mm -hmm. but I know that is really, um, it's really powerful. I was like, mm -hmm. yes, Lord, who I am. He humbled me and it's just like literally humbled me with his love. He, he spoke the truth. So via whatever you experienced, yes, it, it, a lot, it happened. And you are the one I chose to become a cornerstone. And it is like, you know, like yeah. it is my work. So how could you, like, when God speaks to that, so how does it, why did you do this? You know, there's no excuse. It's like, Lord, okay, and thank you for really delivering me from this rejection. That's right. And it was like, I still have, yeah, I still have this kind of feeling when people came, they will probably reject you or speak something like work or something. The feeling is not right. However, because he released and let me love to me, I understand. It's like I'm loved. Whatever you're rejecting, my God loves me. You know, my God loves me. So it's like right. there's nothing like that in my life. That's right. Yeah. And afterwards, he, yeah, he, he just like really like trained me up. Like you have to manage your mindset. And then sometimes, surprisingly, like he gave me the words like. Holy Spirit, please take in charge my mind, my soul, my spirit, my thoughts every day. Like every morning, just I pray and it came to my mind. I said praying and it, like this gave me an intention that everything came to my mind. I was like, no, that's not from my God. I rebuke you. I rebuke you. So he trimmed me up as really like it's a warfare. When we're through mm -hmm. this, not only the process of healing, it's really a battle for us to standing up, really standing on the like stand formally as who we are in christ right. and i know his love with us and we have this authority to rebuke the devil so just mm -hmm. like we said is like we can't really like you know devil you don't have anything in us and i understand completely but doesn't mean they understand what you think they always try to test you or that not test you like tempt right. you or trick you um but i think it is definitely a journey a process mm -hmm. um yeah and hopefully um this is a bit encouraging to you guys, but it's like really like what uh, Ruth, 
what you shared is my personal experience and um it's really like you know and after i think after god gave you love he delivered us and he taught you that he gave us the authority and then through this thing we need to really stand fast to pray like really vulnerably i don't know like fearfully like uh really strong like uh you know mm. i i've been here for i'm in the african congregation in beijing so i know the africans like prayers so usually we have to really <laughs> fire bear i love it um mm. yes yeah, so um it's not a small battle because we really like battle mind he always like this enemy is always want to came um, to steal steal the peace mm -hmm. whatever like you know to kill the the healing kill this kind of like you know the your passion our passion the love with god yeah it's just like and when god calls to be in this position to fight and we have to obey god and to fight these battles so exactly. i think it's another level of this after the healing we have to like you know like we said it's like warfare yeah amen amen, yeah. amen. that's awesome that's that's thank you Thank you, Sophia. That was awesome testimony. Amen. That's exactly where we're at. You know, that's the battle, you know, and walking it out and applying, applying it. And that's what you were having to do. Amen. And it's true. When God comes to you with truth and love, it, it's, you know, it's over for the devil. That's all it is. As long as you're willing and obedient, you're going to eat the good of the land. Amen. And so we have to just submit to it when he comes like that. Amen. And you did. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Um, Miss Linda Blue. Did you have something, dear? I, I just want to, um, you bring so much enlightenment, you bring so much confirmation, and you bring so much understanding in, in the just the simplistic ways that you bring it. And, and I was listening to you, and when you began to talk about um, that unity, where, the, where there's unity of his spirit, it commands the blessings of the Lord. It commands the blessings of heaven. And, and the, the Lord had began to deal with me. And he said, I'm going to deal with the wounds, W-O-U-N-D-S, of the wounds, W-O-U-D-S. Okay. And so a lot of times before we, because the Bible says, first of all, we are born shaping into sin and iniquity. And I think it was, uh, uh, What's her name? Uh, is it Veronica McDonald or something like mm -hmm. that? That came in and she said, well, you didn't come from your mother. You just came through your mother. And so just listening to this, you know, the Lord has been dealing with me and, and my, my oldest daughter. And I'm really grateful that the light is being shed, even though I can talk about it. It's very painful when you can see how you've affected someone else's life by something that you didn't even know was going on with your own life Amen. And so I, as you were talking it was like I could see myself looking at my daughter and me trying to talk to her where I'm at right now and it's hard for me to try to talk to her and I can see I can see the rejection. I can see the hurt. I can see the pain. And, and because of me not knowing or me not being taught how to deal with emotions and feelings. And sometimes I get very frustrated and I'm like, Lord, you're going to have to help me here. And he's like, no, I'm not going to have to help you here. You just going to have to let me come in and yeah what I need to do and as only as I can do it. The only help you need me to do is to help you stay out of my way so that I can do what I need to do. Right. And That's so right. it is very painful. This It's a painful, weighty place for me right now. It's a place that I'm learning and I have said in the past, Lord, I don't know. I don't know how to do it, but I am learning. I can say now, since <laughs> this journey, since this eye opener, since this revelatory place and space and time here, I can say, okay, Lord, I'm learning. Because she called me the other day and she went to tell me something. And I'm telling you, all I can say is, God, I am so proud of you. 
<laughs> I'm so proud of you, God, that you didn't let me put my mouth on it, that you didn't let me go to talk about it, to say what I think or what I know it needs to be. I mm -hmm. say this with you. I'm praying for you. I love you. And I got off the phone and I called Minister Thomas and I told her, I said, oh, God kept me, God kept me. Oh, God kept me, God kept me. I said, I'm so proud of God. I'm so proud of God. <laughs> You don't, you know, they don't need, they don't need to hear our religion. They just need to feel our love. But, but, but this is what God showed me. And this is what has happened in the body of Christ because we, and, 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 uh, Apostle Ruth, you, you spoke on it. You, you spoke on it. And, and when people get saved, they don't teach you the things or when you, even when you get delivered, when you get delivered, they don't teach you. They don't talk about how to steward it, how to hold on to it, how to talk about it, how to talk to it. And so then when you get there, the next thing you know, here comes the thing because I wrote it down. And so once we once we do one little thing that says I'm now giving the enemy the opportunity to let him know I'm in agreement with what he did. Well, if I lie, if I said a lie, oh, it was just a small lie. It was a white lie or whatever, it, whatever it is that we do. It's like, OK, well, I give you the permission to come back and do that thing to me again and but when it comes to us we're crying we're like oh lord why did i do that thing again well i agreed with it that's right I gave it permission to come back to set up to do this thing again and it so fragment us more that's yeah. right and it and because then what it does is it kicks in the spirit of condemnation well no that but it brings in seven more yes yes and so i i just i was i was just looking at this and and I could see my daughter and I, I was like, man, I, I did. I, I, I didn't teach her. There were a lot of things that I didn't teach her because I didn't know myself. And so mm -hmm. now that I see it, now that I'm in this place and I can see the rejection and she does, she has a spirit of rejection. And I'm believing that in this place right here, that my prayers for her are going to change because mm -hmm. now I have a better understanding of where it came from because I was mad at her and I'm like, well, why won't you stand up and say something? Why won't you stand up and fight? Well, there were times in my life where the enemy took control of me and I didn't stand up and say anything. Exactly. And I exactly. didn't stand up and fight. And I didn't even, even think in my mind or my heart because I didn't know that I had a choice in Come the on. And so, so many don't know that they have a choice just Come to on. Say no, I don't want to be this way. No, I'm not going to be like my mama. No, I'm not going to be like the rest of them. No, I'm going to stand here. And so right now, I'm just, I am, I ask for prayers that I can stay out of God's way. I'm asking God to help save me from myself because I, I can say something about it real quick. I can be, I can be, I can be that mama. <laughs> Because I told her, she said something to me the other day, and I told her, I said, girl, I said, don't tell me that. And I said, I feel like Madea. You'll make me get in my car and drive my car up them steps. Don't do that. <laughs> so, well, that's not you. I can't see. No, not you. <laughs> I say, and, and so I'm saying, Lord, help me, help me. Because what I saw in the spirit realm, and I was praying for this lady. And the Lord say, ask her if she stood before me and she asked me, why didn't I save her child? And he said to her, every time I put a test in front of your child to save her, you got in my way. And so mm -hmm. sometimes the Lord puts people in places to help them come out. But then we can't say, no, that's my child. That's my baby. Let me go help them. But that was God's place of allowing them to turn to him instead of to me as the parent. And so mm -hmm. I just need to get out and, and let him work with my child like I'm allowing him to work with me. Amen. 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 Yes, Lord. yes, sir. Well, we're going to pray right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we lift up our sister Linda, God. And those of us that are parents, we can relate 100%. God, because we always want to fix them. We always want to correct them. We always want to address them. We always want to give them our two cents worth. And, you know, a lot of times they just really don't want to hear it because they're not going to be obedient to it because of where they personally are at at the moment. A lot of times we're just beating the wind and, and could even be pushing them away or making them harder for you to draw. 
So God, we just plead the blood of Jesus over Miss Linda and her children, God. God, we thank you, Lord God, that you just give us all as parents, including Miss Linda, including myself, anybody else that's on here that's a parent. God, give us all wisdom, godly wisdom, godly direction, godly guidance. God, that we will be the light and that we will love. And God, because just as you spoke to my heart one day, God, as I was struggling with one of them, God, you reminded me that they were your child before they were ever mine, that these children aren't loan to me. And that just as much as I love them, you love them even more beyond my even comprehending. So God, we just thank you, Lord God, that you love our children greater and deeper and more immeasurable than we could ever fathom. And that, God, you know what's best for our children. And we just have to trust you with our children. So, Father, we just thank you that you have your way in all of our children's lives. That the enemy will not prosper. That not one of them will leave the earth without knowing you. Not one of them will leave the earth without fulfilling their purpose and their destiny in you. And, God, even if, Father God, we have done things, Father God, to, to get in your way. Father God, we, we truly repent, God. And we ask you to heal them. We ask you to deliver them. We ask you to do what only you can do in their lives and their hearts. And restore, restore family relationships as only you can. And God, help us, help us, God, to not get in your way. Help us, God, not to put our hands on when we need to take our hands off. Help us, God, to walk in a way, Father God, that is in agreement with you concerning our children. Help us, Father God, to stay out of the way so that we don't get in your way because God a lot of them don't need to hear our religion they just need to feel our love because you are love and you are going to draw them you're going to heal them you're going to deliver them you're going to restore them as only you can and we just got to show them the light and the love that you are let it shine through us to them let them see a difference that we're not being religious that we're not throwing scriptures at them but God we're walking it out we're walking in your love we're walking in your truth let them begin to see the difference let them begin to see the change and let them begin to know the real you through us father in jesus name amen amen see that was the other thing miss linda that i had to repent of because you know years ago i, I really believe i had more of a religious um relationship than an intimate relationship with god and, and I didn't allow a lot of these deep changes and deep workings. And so I was quick to tell my children this scripture, that scripture, you're doing this wrong, you're doing that wrong, you know. And so the Lord, the Lord, um, the Lord um, showed me one day, he said, you know, this is what's happening in my body. He says a lot of my ministers and a lot of the, the older generation's children don't want to go to church because they've seen the wrong image of me in my church. You know, because we've religiously portrayed the image of Christ. They have not really, you know, seen the true image of Christ. And so I believe that as we come into this place of walking in truth and walking in love, and we have these new encounters and new experiences with the Lord that we're engaging in, we're going to begin to reflect the right image. We're going to begin to reflect Christ as who he is and not a religious image that begins to turn them away from Christ. But what's within us is going to begin to illuminate the true image in such a way that they're going to be drawn to us and to him through us. Amen. Amen. So I agree with you. I understand completely what you're saying, Miss Linda. I got four children and I know it's so hard. It's so hard because you don't want them to walk where you walked. You don't want them to make those mistakes and know those pains that you've known. But they're their own children. You know, they're their own person. And, you know, like I said, when God told me that one day. He said, I love them more than you could ever love them. They were mine first. Mm -hmm. So that, that allowed me to begin to loosen the grip and know that God loved them and cared for them and knew what was better for them, even than what I could even begin to think of or do. You know, they're his first. Amen. So sometimes I had to keep laying them down and say, okay, they're yours. Here you go, God. Take your kids. You know, <laughs> take your kids back, Lord. Take them, take them, God. I put them in your hands, you know. <laughs> and, and that's what we sometimes have to do, you know, because sometimes we do try to try to fix them. And then they just get aggravated and it pushes them away, you know. So we have to just really walk it and and know 
you know, when God says to engage and when he says to disengage, you know, we just got to be sensitive or, you know, we just can't just, uh, you know, as a knee jerk reaction, you know, but we've got to be sensitive and be led, be led in this area. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Anybody else have anything? May I share something? Um, the Lord healed me of a, the orphan spirit and also um, teaching me that my voice is important because um, even though right now I'm walking through a trauma or a trial, I should say, I shouldn't have spoken about it. But I want to just um, say that God has just brought so much peace into me now because he told me about what was the cycle. In fact, he said last night, because the enemy wants to keep you in a cycle of trauma and anguish in order to feed his insecurities. The devil cannot reproduce. He needs to be fed by your demonic worries and your demonic replays. And, and um, so he, so God showed me that. And he said that I am important and that my voice was very important to be um, heard. Amen. And, and in that, in that, truth even though i did share some things that probably shouldn't have um he's also teaching me that you can just trust the church and um though sometimes they try to tell you you must submit you must do this when jesus is saying i want you to come to me and hear what i have to say about you let me tell you how beautiful you are let me tell you what your voice is and though the devil may have done something i was even born with the umbilical cord around my neck but Jesus, you know, and so what was shared and God said, watch what the enemy tried to do for bad. I'm going to turn it around for good. It's going to be a victory and I'm going to blast it through because they can't fight your battle. Only I can. And so there is where the surrender is. I don't know if you guys can tell, but there's so much peace in my heart. Amen. And I'm transformed. Thank you. Amen. Awesome. God bless you. Thank you for sharing. That's so awesome. And yes, your voice is important. Everyone has a voice. Everyone has a purpose. Everyone has a destiny. And, and that's what I was saying at the beginning. You may not have been here, but what's so awesome about this journey is, yes, people are getting free, delivered, and healed, but also they're beginning to launch into their true identity and their true purpose and their own personal destiny. And that's exciting to watch as well. So yes, you have a voice and you are important and what you say matters. Amen. Amen. Anybody else? Amen. Thank you. Anybody else have anything to add, share, pray? Good morning, Everybody. Ruth. Who am I talking to here? Patricia. Oh, Patricia. Hey, you looking spiffy there this morning. God bless you. you, beautiful. I'm doing better. Thank you. Amen. Um, when you were speaking with, um, I think it's Miss Rebecca. Um, God began to deal with me and I went in, you know, I went into tongues and different things and God began to, um, play over my mind, um, Moses's story and Joseph's story and how God's glory is in every story. Amen. How, um, I happen to see, and I, you know, I don't know. So I, I, I just say, I happen to see, I thought. Um, I saw uh, Miss Rebecca um, eventually pulling out some other girls, uh, maybe in her family or around her, dealing with the same situations. And that because she was able to pull loose and because she was able to see it, she's now relatable, which is what God needs us to be, to be able to relate to those and show them this is how you get out. This is how I was able to get out. I didn't stay in the cycle because the ones that are in the cycle are blinded. Come on. So when you awaken, come on. To say, hey, wake up. Hey, come on. wake up. Come on. Come on. So, mm. just, you know, I just thank God. I just thank God. Even in my own life, I'm able to now, you know, speaking of my kids, my kids have been you know, living um, in California for the last 10 years. And due to circumstances, whatever God has done, we're now all under the same roof. They're helping me and I'm helping them. And I, I have, we have had several conversations about healing. They've had several, you wow. know, 
asking me deep questions that I've been able to answer now and perception of things that I have done. I have now been able to say, no, this is why I did this. This is why I made that decision. This is what led me to this. And they're able to say, oh man, I didn't even know you thought about it like that. Or I didn't even think you were aware. And it's like, no, now I'm able to tell you my strategies that I've had to learn. I didn't say anything, but you didn't know what I was uh, uh, maneuvering behind the scenes. And that's the same thing God has been dealing with me with is now the same things that I am speaking to them is the same things that God has been doing with me myself, maneuvering you behind the scenes Yes, to make decisions and maneuvers and say certain things and plant huh. and do different things. And it's like, now you get to see the harvest or now I can reveal certain things for you to be able to understand. And I, I thank God for you. Mama Ruth, I, I do. I'm so glad we made the connection, uh, connection. I don't know how many years ago, but I just thank God. <laughs> Patricia Weaver. I've been known Patricia for a while. She, um, you, you took the prophetic training too, didn't you? Yes. And, and yes. you know what? It, it was the enemy that pulled me out of that due to a religious spirit and some things that I've been dealing with. And I was like, I just, you know, but I met, I went up there and I met, um, the prophet, I sure did. I awesome. did anyways. <laughs> and we also we also had a um, women's group for a while that we were doing doing some things with, but it kind of fizzled out. But I feel I feel the strength in this. I feel the momentum in this, and so I, I praise God that you uh, joined back up with us. It, it's Amen. awesome. It's awesome what God's doing, and you look you look better it, from you. the first from the first weeks that we started i can definitely i see a progression taking place uh you you definitely are brighter you actually look much more happier you don't look as oppressed um you, you look like you are really really coming up in the spirit and, and i'm proud of you i'm proud of you and you know for your stand and for your diligence and you know it, it takes courage to face Ooh. these things it takes courage <laughs> to come out of these things you know, you're, you're beginning to arise in boldness and say, you know what, that's not who I really am. I'm, I'm connecting with the real me. I'm connecting with who God says I am. And I'm letting these former things go because truly what you're talking about is really the whole concept as well as to break it off, break it off, yeah. break it off our family, break it off, not just off of us, but our bloodline, you know, break it off our children and our children's children, you know, be yeah. the cycle breaker. Be the yes. cycle breaker. And so it stops with us. Amen. And the new thing starts with us. So this is what you're doing. You're stopping it. And you're the old thing. And you're starting a new thing for your family. And it's so cool that you got them right there. That you're taking them on the journey. And you're you're implanting this stuff in them. Come on. It, it, it's like you're, God is using you to put the seeds in. For yeah. him to water. And to begin a new cycle. A godly cycle. You know, generally no blessings to be released come on this is a new day patricia and it's not by it's not by accident that they're there and they're being nurtured by you in this new positioning and this new outpouring and this new love and this restoration that's on you there's an anointing of restoration on you that i'm sensing in the name of jesus mm -hmm. and this restoration is not just for you it's not just restoring you but it's restoring your family come on it's restoration for your family there's a there's a total house restoration restoration that's taken place come on and you're going to begin to see even a restoration of finances because god is restoring you from the inside out uh, third john one two is your portion and even those areas that you've been struggling with uh, in the finances and and things that you you know got frustrated with because things didn't work out and even all around about you i see things beginning to divinely align as you come into this place and you're partnering with restoration and you're partnering with the truth and you're over overcoming i see some new alignments i see some new things coming into your life to denote to you that you are operating and functioning in the new creation identity that you're a new man and old things are passing away patricia old things are passing away you got to believe that all you women of god you got to believe old things are passing away and your god is making all things new in you amen and you're going to begin to experience new things in your life not the same old, same old, same old things. 
Amen. But you're going to begin to experience new things because of the new thing that he's doing inside of you. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Oh. Amen. Anybody else have anything? Yes, Patricia, um, I just want to say something to you. While you were talking, God showed me this honey coming out of your mouth. Yes. And Patricia, ah. I saw that the devil was playing you like a puppet on a string. And while Mama Ruth was talking, I just see the, the, a big scissor snapping or um, you know, cutting off those strings off of the enemy's hands. And I just feel there's a total release on you. Um, I just wanted to bless you with that word. Amen. Glory to God, Shiloh. Thank you for your obedience, woman of God. Amen. 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 Stephanie, you got your hand raised? Yes. Can you hear me okay? Yes, we can. Okay. I, I would just like prayer. My, my youngest child is in jail. Um, and he will tell you he's, he has been taught right but he was not taught how to stand and resist the lie. Uh, and I have repented for that. But, you know, the Lord has, since he's been there, the Lord has worked on him and his whole life has changed. And I can be thankful for that, but I miss him so much. I know. I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure. So, so saints, come on, come on. Let's, let's pray for Stephanie. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, Amen. we just lift up our sister. Uh, yes. God, we plead the blood of Jesus over her. First of all, yes. we just want to just break off any condemnation right now in Jesus name, because God, she did the best that she could. Come on. She did the best that she could from where she was at. Yes. So God, I thank you, Lord God, that your grace is sufficient. Yes. I thank you for her son, oh God. I thank you, Lord God, that he's had that turnaround. He's had that change in his life and his heart, oh God. That God, that he is, Father God, beginning to, to search for you. He's beginning to reach for you. He's beginning to learn yeah. of you. God, I thank you, Lord God, that even while he's where he's at, oh God, that you will go deep into his depths, oh God. Oh God, and you, Father God, you will release him from in, every inward prison cell in Jesus' yeah. name, God. And God, I thank yeah. you, Lord God. I see the light of God beginning to flow blood right where he's at and i see i see prison doors beginning to open within the depths of his soul oh god god i thank you lord god that your light and your truth and your love oh god we send them to him now in jesus name and we thank you lord god that you release him from every inward captivity oh god in jesus name and that you are the truth and then when the spirit of truth comes you lead us into all truth and you oh god are the teacher you are the teacher so god even if he doesn't have anybody there to instruct him oh god that you will begin to teach him by your spirit oh god of how to resist the enemy of how to stand strong in you and god how to draw nigh to you oh god oh god that you will rebirth within him a relationship with you based on truth and love as never before that when he comes out oh god he's going to be such a new creation he's not even going to run back to the old things or the old man in jesus name but it will be cut off because it's been uprooted and he's been freed in the depths of his soul even while he's in a natural prison you're freeing him from every internal prison god yes. god i thank you lord god that even if possible god you'll make a way for for him to be released oh god after that inward work is done oh god even shorten yes. his time there if possible oh god oh god we thank you lord god that you give him such grace and favor that the angels of god are being camped around about him oh god and that there'll yes. be no harm no injury oh god even those Father God, that may try to come against him, I pray and declare that you're going to raise up a standard against the enemy right now in Jesus' yes. name, uh -huh. and that no weapon formed against him shall prosper. Oh yes. God, that you will even use him as a light in the midst of the yes. darkness there, Father God. You will even, Father God, begin to activate the gift scene. Oh God, begin to activate the gifting, the calling. Oh God, I see gifts within him, oh God, that's been laying dormant 
man, oh God, and God, you, Father God, can activate and begin to use him to even expand your kingdom, begin to expand even the knowledge of your presence, even in the midst of that place of darkness, oh God. Oh God, let him begin to shine the light. Let him become the light. Let him become one with the light as never before. Let him begin to give testimonies to his mama about what you're doing. Let him begin to, Father God, begin to stir a revival, begin to stir a revival because you are the revival and you are stirring the depths of his soul. You're causing revival even in his depths. And God, I thank you. God, I thank you for revival, revival, revival in the jail cell, revival, revival in that jail, wherever he is at, oh God, stir up the atmosphere, oh, stir up the atmosphere. Let there be revival in that place, oh God. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Oh, I got to share something real quick, ladies. I got to share something. I got to share something. I'm going to tell on myself. Oh, Lordy. Oh, God. I got to share this. Oh, Lordy. I got to share this. Oh, Lordy. Oh, okay. I'm going to share this. Okay. <laughs> but years and years ago, I got arrested and I was put in jail <laughs> for something that I did before I got saved. And it caught up with me after I got saved. I was in my mid 20s. But I had been safe for a while and I was on fire. I was on fire. And when when they arrested me, it was it was kind of it was kind of funny. The, the guy come and arrested me and he felt he felt guilty for arresting me. He said, I gotta come arrest somebody like you. I mean, he was convicted. He he put me in the front seat, he didn't even handcuff me. And the whole way there, I, I was bawling, I was squalling, you know, I'm going to jail, you know. And he was like, ma'am, he says, This is just something you gotta do to get it behind you. He, he, it was like he was he was ministering to me and he didn't realize he was ministering to me you know and when he got me there and he set me down and they were booking me you know he was he didn't even he he walked away from me and left me unhandcuffed it was like you know he, i didn't it didn't really experience some of the things i probably was supposed to experience but god was using you know kid gloves on me and but then when i got when i got transported to the dorm where all the women were you know and and there was this uh you know, in this big dorm where all the women were, there's all these bunks all around there. It's kind of intimidating when you walk in. <clears throat> As I walked in with my rolled up mattress, you know, and my roll of toilet paper, my toothbrush and my toothpaste that they give you when you get there. And I walked in there and was looking for a bunk. And as I walked by, you know, all these bunks, there was there was women laying up in the beds together and everything. And I was like, oh, Jesus, Lord. And I uh, <laughs> And I dropped my my uh, rolled up mat, and and this one this one girl come running across the dorm to help me, and another one said, "Yeah, you see why she's helping you tonight when the lights go out." And I thought, "Oh my God, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus!" <laughs> <laughs> so bless, us, bless us, bless us, Ruth. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm standing over, I'm standing over by my bunk, you know, and, and I laid out my mattress and, and the, uh, was this older lady come and she tapped me on the shoulder and she said, uh, she said, uh, we're going to go over here and we're going to pray. And I thought, oh, thank you, Jesus. You know how to get me through this. <laughs> And so, and so off this major dorm, there was like these cells that that were like one bunk and a toilet that I guess the women had been there the longest. They kind of graduated and got their own little private dimension, one little cubicle. And so we went to this little cubicle. It was a little little cubicle with one toilet and a bunk and just had a little bit of room. And um, so we go in there and we start having a Bible study. And before you know it, you know, we're praying. And before you know it, another one came in from out there. Another one came in from out there. Another one came in from out there. Before you know it, we were packed in there like sardines and we were worshiping and we were praying and you couldn't do nothing but jump straight up and down because we were in there just like this. I mean, it was like, it was packed. And then all of a sudden the guard come because she didn't see everybody out there in the outer dorm. And she come and she popped open the door and she starts counting heads. And I thought, oh God, are we in trouble? And she just counted heads, shook her head, closed the door and left. She was just taking account for Everybody, but she didn't dispel us and so we went back and let me tell you we we prayed and prayed and prayed until lights went out and we had to go to our bunks and there was so many so many things that took place there that night it was unreal people got saved we prayed for families to get restored we prayed deliverances and there was revival in that room i'm talking about yeah, the atmosphere yeah. was pure revival i mean it was hot in there and the yeah, one girl yeah. she come up to me she was crying she said we prayed for you to come here and i'm thinking 
på cinq ans. <rire> She said, no, you're so full. We needed you to come here. God sent you here. And I'm thinking, mm, I don't know if God sent me here. I think my actions got me here, but thank you. you know? <laughs> <laughs> but see, God knew how to get me through that. You know, he knew he began to stir oh. up what was in me because he knew that yeah. if he could stir it up, you know, his, his presence, you know, and what was within me, he knew how to get me through it. And that's what I'm saying to your son. You know, I'm speaking to that call within him. I'm speaking to that gift within him. I'm speaking to God within him to arise. And no matter how long he's got to be there, if God's using him, honey, it's going to fly by. You know what I'm saying? Because he's going to be walking in his purpose. He's going to be walking in who God created him to be, no matter if it's behind the jail cell or out of the jail cell. But if we're walking in purpose, it doesn't matter where we're at. God's going to get us through it. He's going to get him through it. And so that's my prayer for your son is that he will begin to even begin to walk in his purpose, even where he's at. It may not be the best of circumstances, but God can get him through that. And God can get glory out of every moment that he's there. Amen. 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 So now, you know, where I spent some of my time. All right. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> anyway God be the glory. <laughs> Right. Now, I just want to yes. say something. Um, I I also saw uh, your son ministering in the in the cells while Mrs. Ruth was 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 praying. I just want to say to you, don't hammer yourself too much. God is showing me that uh, there's a golden nugget that you deposited into his heart through your faith, and your faith is going to carry him, and your faith that you Come taught on. him is going he's going to hand over to other people and i see oh, yeah. uh, teenage boys around mm -hmm. him he's going to minister to teenage oh thank you jesus he's going to minister mm -hmm. to teenage boys so they don't make the same mistakes that they will walk in glory come on come on that's it right there that's it right there confirmation mm -hmm. amen. amen amen anybody else this has been awesome y'all I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. It's been so good. You. <laughs> Did somebody say something? Me. Oh, okay. I know my child has a very high call because yes, he, does. he can love the lowest of the lowest person without any condemnation at all. And he knows just so many people and just loves them for who they are. Amen. That's why the devil has fought him so hard. But God's going to turn it around. Yes. Turn it around. He is. Because there is a call of God on his life. And that's what I was led to speak to. And she confirmed it. Amen. So you hold on to that, Mama. You hold on to that. And you begin to speak to the call of God in his life. And that God will begin to use him right where he's at. Amen. And then catapult him when he comes out. Amen. That he comes out of every prison cell that's in internal. Amen. So when he comes out, you're going to know he's free, 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 free. And he ain't going back to that former stuff ever again. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. All right. Anybody else? Stephanie, may I, may I, um, can I encourage you? One of my favorite evangelists served at Rikers Island. He was the biggest drug dealer you ever met. And that man could find any lost soul and he would go after them just like he used to the drugs and he would just minister. It was just absolutely beautiful. So God took his brokenness Amen. and brought it for God's glory. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, glory, glory. Apostle, excuse me, Apostle Ruth, did you say something about us meeting on, is it, we go back to regular on the Monday morning? I thought we would go back. Uh, we was, we use Zoom. Okay. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll meet at the same time uh, at nine o'clock Eastern, but I think we will um, meet on Zoom. That way we can record it because so much has been happening. Like yeah. people get prophetic releases or whatever. Um, that way they can always, you know, I can post it in our little message group. And that way people could go back and listen to it over. Amen. Yeah. So we're going to start that on Monday and you can have your camera off. You understand it's different time zones. Some people may not want to get up and get makeup on or whatever. So you can still keep your camera off if you want to. Um, but we're going to do this simply so that we can record it because so much has been happening in these gatherings. 
um, that we don't want people to miss out on it that may not be able to join. Or if you get something prophetic and you want to go back to listen to it, to write it down or whatever, you can uh, do so because it's recorded. Amen. All yeah. right. I heard you something about a prophetic. You talk prophetic class. Um, yeah. Well, after we um, get done with the uh, this six weeks, um, I had posed a question and I think we're going to go ahead and do it because I think I had some um, people that were in agreement with it. We're going to go beyond the six weeks and do further training and mentoring. And um, one thing that I did previously was I had um, a, a prophet and a team of prophets. We did prophetic training and he was a very good, a very good trainer. Um, and he's flowed in the prophetic in the office of the prophet for years and years. And he had a team of prophets and we did a, a prophetic training. Um, so we, we're going to probably go off into different areas of mentoring and training for those that are interested after we get done um, with the six weeks. Um, and the other thing is um, I want to do the, uh, the book. Um, we talked about that, those that saw the thing, um, those that want to write a testimony um, on their life and their journey. Um, you know, you can have a chapter in this book that we're going to put together. Um, based on the group and, and their life experiences and their journey to maybe, you know, encourage others. Um, so we'll work on that after we get through the six weeks. And also, I want to do an online conference um, um, with the women that want to be a part of it. Um, no longer victimized, but deputized. And um, everybody that wants to be a speaker um, can sign up with me. Um, and we'll go ahead and have, you know, a few nights, one week where we set apart where the women of God can take turns coming on and, and ministering whatever the Lord lays on their heart to bring forth freedom and victory in the lives of the people that join. Amen. 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 So we got a lot coming on. So y'all just, uh, you know, stay connected. Um, you know, and after the six weeks, if you don't feel like you still want to be hooked up with us, that's fine. No harm, no foul. Amen. Um, big thing is that you get what God's destined for you to get out of this and you begin to walk in your purpose and destiny. That's all I want out of this for you. Amen. Is that you get healed and whole and that you begin to walk in what God's called you to walk in. Amen. That's my heart for you. So anyway, amen. All right. Everybody good. Yes, ma'am. Amen. Dr. Okay. Esther, can, can I put you on the spot to pray us out? Yeah, she loves me. I'm pulling her. I'm the puller. Remember, I'm pulling you. <laughs> come on, sissy. Come on. Oh. <laughs> okay. Oh. Why did I know she was going to do that? I was trying sissy, to hide. Come on. No more okay. hiding. No more hiding. <laughs> come on, woman. Come on. Of you got us, girl. You got us. <laughs> okay. Oh, Father, we just want to thank you this morning, oh God. I want to thank you, Lord, for this, for this group of women, Lord, who are so powerful in you, God. And they don't even know it, but they are so powerful, God. The way you're going to use them, what you're doing in our lives is for a purpose, Lord. For such a time as this, you put us all together, God. Because you said enough is enough of pain. It's time for you to, for you to begin to use the gifting in all of us, oh God. So I thank you, Lord, and I pray, Lord, for, for each one, each woman on this group, in this group, oh, Lord, I pray for, Lord, that you would bring healing, God, and in the areas that, Lord, we still want to try to hold on to or, or, or feel like we're still victims, oh, God, because we're not. We will no longer say we're victims, oh, God. We will no longer agree with the enemy, God, because he's already losing ground, God. He's already lost ground. Because I know he, I, he does not have me anymore. God, and I just pray, Father, for, for just complete healing. And, and God, that you would just show each and every one of us, Lord, how much you love us. And Amen. God, that, you're, that you have never left us, Lord God, that you've always been with us. God, that in times when we felt the lowest of low, Lord, you were there closest to us, holding us, oh God. So I just thank you, Lord. I thank you for, for your mercy. I thank you for your grace. And I ask, Lord, that you would continue to use Pastor Ruth, oh God, Mama Ruth, Lord, and 
in, so, in the way that you've been using her, Lord God, because she's, it's made such a big difference even in my life, even in these last two weeks, God, the difference that I, that I have found in me, oh God, what I would normally react to, God, you're just telling me to be still and I'm listening, God, and I just pray, Lord, that you would do the same for each woman on here, oh God, that you would just continue to carry us through and Lord, when we feel that we can't hold on or that we can't make it, God, that you will show us, yes, we can. Because you, you, you are true to your promises. You're true to your word. Your word never returns void, oh God. And you're with us. You've got this. You've got us, oh God. Amen. So I thank you, Lord Jesus. I thank you for today. I pray that you would cover every woman here, that you would cover our families, oh God, and that you would... God, help us do what we have to do throughout this day, Lord. Amen. And I give you all the glory and all the praise. Amen. 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 People of God. All right. We love y'all. Remember, love you, Mama if you need prayer or need something, reach out. Reach out. Amen. 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 All right. Amen. We'll see you all so, Monday. Go. Those that can join. So, before I'm sorry. You go, before you go. I just want to just be, I'm sensed and led if we all could just lean our hands toward Apostle Mama Ruth. Yes. To your body in the mighty yes. name. Yes, Jesus. From the crown of yes. your head to the soles of your feet and yes. back from the soles of your feet to the crown of your head. Yes, so mm -hmm. Joy life to this precious vessel of God. Yes, Lord. Just seizes at a, seize it as a honor to bless your people, Lord God. Yes, Lord. True revelation, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of Thank this you, walk Lord. with you, Father. Hallelujah. She understands that much is given, much is required, oh God. And Thank we you, pray, God, that you are going to strengthen her body. Uh, uh, yes, up the greater level of endurance yes, for the place that you've called her mm -hmm. to, Father. Mm -hmm. And if, because you've called her to it, Father, you're going to provide. Mm -hmm. You are the way maker. You yes, Jesus. Yes, Lord. I'm, all I just see is just mm -hmm. an elevation. Jesus. This is an elevation. This is an elevation. Like yes, an elevator going up. Yes, Lord Jesus. God, it's not going to be a hard pull on you. Because when you're mm -hmm. going up in an elevator, all you got to do is get in and push the button. Mm -hmm. The elevator does the work itself. Hallelujah. This is not going to be the easiest place for you. This is not going to be a weighty place for you. Yes, yes, thank you Lord. Hallelujah. God. This is not like you uh, having to use your own body strength or functioning to walk up steps. He said, yes, the elevator ride for you. Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We agree, God. We thank yes, you for the encounter by the God. Yes, God. Yes, Jesus. Formed against her mentally, physically, emotionally. Yes, God. God. We thank you, Father, yes, for the rains that are upon her. Thank you. Thank you. In the name I of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Father, I thank you for the sweet aroma. I see you. I see you. In the I know you. You're an open window. And you know how you can smell yeah. the rain. Jesus. I yeah, Lord. The Lord yeah, yeah. smell the rain from a shoe. Like when the oh, rain is good dirt, good stuff. That's a smell all by itself. Even before the rains come, you've got the aroma of it in your nostrils. God, I bless you for her. I bless you for God. Yes, we do, God. Yes. Here is your heart. Thank you. Thank you. Here is your spirit. Thank you. And we thank you, God, how she such a spirit yes. and humility. And yes. God, we honor her, Lord God. Yes, God. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus, he ain't asking me to say this, but the spirit of the Lord is saying this to me. If you if, if, if you feel it in your spirit, if the Lord speaks to you about it, then you sow a seed into her because there's not many people that are so real and genuine in this hour that mm -hmm. you see, I want to be free, but you can mm -hmm. only be free if you got 1999. Hey, I want to be free, <laughs> but you can't get 1999. You see, I want the I want you to get the understanding of the thing Ooh, that you get it unless you got 1999. <laughs> How
This is where we're at right now. And Jesus. Forgotten that this is about the souls. And so anytime God <laughs> blesses us to run across somebody, Minister Thomas and us, and I, we, we pray for you, Mother Ruth, because you see, yes, it's not often that you come across mm. people who genuinely love the Lord. And they are only mm. concerned if yes. I want you to make it. And yes, I, yes. I understand yeah. the body of Christ has been duped. She has been <laughs> because Thank if you. you get duped, your heart don't know how to respond to freedom and the liberty. You see, I don't My think God. you owe me nothing because the Bible says, oh, no man, nothing but to love him. Glory to God. And so mm. across somebody yeah, who moves mm, in this this see who moves in this embrace, who moves in this anointing and don't have a problem with saying, mm. I ain't trying to charge you $19.99 to get, <laughs> to get healed. To get to <laughs> That's what Jesus <laughs> did because if Jesus would have charged the, the disciples, they never would have made it. Glory to you, Father. And so I'm not asking, she ain't asked me to say, I, she, listen, all I'm saying is what God said to me. Yeah. And if you if you sense that in your spirit, then Jesus. open the spirit of the true living God. Because I don't take this lightly. Some days no, I don't, don't. On here, but I'm going to tell you something. It no, we don't out of me so that anybody and this is one mm. thing she said, she said I don't even want to this is about commitment I want to know that mm. you're committed to being free I want to know because it took it cost her something mm. her something just like it cost Jesus now yes, salvation yes, yes. is free salvation don't cost you nothing but baby let me be real with you it'll cost you your life to walk out salvation <laughs> salvation is free but honey, it'll cost you your life to maintain it and to walk it out. So it does cost you something, but it costs you the thing that money can't buy. Come on, somebody. How do you say And so I'm a woman of God. And, and if I yes, don't do, Mama Ruth. post it, your PayPal, your cash app, whatever it is. But if you are reposted in the group, I'm telling you, the Lord put in my spirit. Oh. It's so into you. Minister Thomas and I was talking about this the other day. Yes. Because yes. this is, this is, I, I can't, this is, I keep saying it. It's like a cool drink of water. Mm -hmm. It says, and I I says yes, I'm. when you give a prophet mm -hmm. a cool glass of Glory. water, he said, you will receive a prophet's reward. Glory. I think mm -hmm. I put that correctly. Amen. Somebody, mm -hmm. but I'm just saying, uh, we bless you. We honor you. And I respect <laughs> your title. I respect your love. I respect mm -hmm. you. Uh, I respect your mm -hmm. dignity. The way you oh, represent God. the Father. You see, I don't want to be mm -hmm. like Apostle Ruth. I want to be like the one who governs Apostle Ruth. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Be like Amen. the one from where she speaks from, from where she loves from, from where she teaches from. That's the yes, one. Lord. Lord. Yes, Lord. Because yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. well mm -hmm. to make me want to. Yes, Jesus. Myself. Amen. Can Amen. I say something now? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um, you just confirmed it, Linda, because um, I've been feeling that for a long time about sowing a seed to her, and um, and I just thank God that you that He confirmed it because I I was just saying, Lord, you know, Amen. she's done so much, and I know that this is not easy. You know, uh, I mean, when you have to hear other people's problems, it's not easy because now she has her own stuff and then everyone else's stuff so she's praying and she's interceding for us you know and, and it's not like we're paying her to do it but you know and it's taking time of, of you know she's taking time out of her own life to do this no mm -hmm. one said well we're going to give you a salary you know so that you can do this with this women this is something that the lord placed in her heart and and because he did that you know i am so I, i'm telling you now I am so different, I can tell you. I mean, what happened to me yesterday with all these lies that were being said about me with my brothers and my two sisters doing all this stuff. And the Lord said to me, Esther, be still. I would have been all over that place. I would have, I, not only would I have been, I would have called them, I would have been all over them. But you know what the Lord said? I've got this. Now, had mm -hmm. I, I'm not, you know, I'm not giving Pastor Ruth the credit because God is using her, but she does get the credit because she's the one that's helping us. 
She so, yielded to God. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I mean, I, I, I do have, a, I'll be honest, I have a very short fuse. So <laughs> if you come up to my face, I'm going to get right back in yours. That's just how I am. But the Lord is Most teaching. Most of us do. <laughs> I've got this, Esther. You don't have to defend yourself anymore. And when other people went and the family went on it, and because they know me, they know my character, they know, you know, I am a woman of integrity. Integrity. I would never have stolen from my mother. I was my mother's caregiver. I mean, come on. Um, and everybody else, even my nieces who never says anything. And my brother, who's one of my brothers who's so quiet, he came to my defense. The Lord said, I've got this. See, the devil always exposes himself because what they did, they're trying to put it on, on me. But I said, the devil is stupid because he always exposes himself. So you guys opened up your own can of worms because now everybody knows what you did, not me. Amen. And I didn't, have to, I didn't have to defend myself because the Lord allowed them to do it. Come on. But you know what? It was, <laughs> if it would have been another time, I would have been all over that. And of course, I would have made a big, you know, I would have just made things worse because I have a bigger problem because I would have been all over them. They're a lot older than me. <laughs> But I still would have been all over them. And, you know, and I wouldn't have shut up. And so my, you know, the Lord said to me, Esther, and it's funny because even before this happened, I had gotten that, that um, I don't know who was the one that gave me the word, but it was like the Lord was preparing me for what was happening. And, and the Lord said to me, Esther, be still. Mm -hmm. And I just sat back. Yes. And you know, I was actually stomping on the devil. I was singing and I was just stomping on it. And I'm saying, you stupid devil, you go yeah. back. To and I was doing this. And my, my sister-in-law was just laughing because they're like, that's not you. My nieces were like, you didn't respond. I said, nope, you all did for me. I said, because God just told me to be still. And so oh. that's, you know, I just want, I, I, I don't, I met Pastor Ruth personally and I love her to death. So I, and I just thank God that, you know, he placed her in my life and our lives. And Amen. I really feel in my spirit to sow a seed. And I, as long as I feel to that, I'm going to do that. Because you know what? I want to bless her. I do want to bless her. Amen. Well, I appreciate y'all. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your love. We love you. And, we and love that's, you know, it, for me, it's, it's not about the money, but I, and I do appreciate I do appreciate because to me that's that's a sign of love what you're what you're expressing, and I appreciate you. I appreciate y'all very much. Yes, ma'am. This is uh this has been a growing process for me as well. Like I said, it's it's uh it's been stretching me. It's been the Lord has been, you know, teaching me even you know things to expound on to bring to you. So it's been a journey for all of us. Amen. It's been a journey. <laughs> Amen. We're growing. We're growing together. Amen. We're growing together. Amen. And I just want to reiterate: I'm here for you as best as I can be, and we're here for one another. And so, don't don't suffer in silence anymore. Don't shut down. Don't close off. You know, reach out when you feel like you're having a bad time. Amen. Because oh, we got to be here for one another. Amen. Oh, and remember Shiloh, because remember she's still her and her husband are still in that situation. You know, they're waiting for you know, them to get that paperwork. So this is a very trying time for them. Yeah. So continue to keep them in prayer as well. Amen. 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 We believe Amen. for the breakthrough Amen. in that area for them. Amen. Amen. So I love y'all ladies. I'll let you go and spend the rest of your day. And uh, we will see each other. Those that can join will on, on Monday, I'll send the Zoom thing. Um, we can join back here so it can be recorded. I'll also um, just put this in the message group in case anybody that was not on wants to hear it, or if you want to go back and replay it, I'll Amen. just post it in that message group. Okay. Amen. All right. All right. So y'all have a blessed day. All right. Love y'all. Love y'all. Okay.